Hello guys and welcome to another multiple apps workflow tutorial with me, Eldrin from Logic to Lumiere. Today I'm excited to present Cinema 4D to Arnold, the new plugin from Solid Angle. And Cinema 4D to Arnold has been in development since July, ever since uh, Daniel from Ugly Kids uh, took it upon himself to kind of sort of build uh, this plugin out uh, from scratch after a uh, Arnold or after Solid Angle uh, exposed the API and kind of allowed people to get in there and kind of sort of develop things for it. Um, eventually, it was taken up by Solid Angle themselves, and um, now you know after quite a few months, we we finally have it. Um, I've been on the beta team since uh, March, and it's just been an exciting roller coaster here. Um, the community has been very very great. Uh, we've been working through bugs. I've been submitting bugs. Other people have been submitting bugs. People have been working with each other to kind of sort of get an idea of where they want to shape this plugin and where it wants to go. So it's really a community of users, and I, uh, I am gracious to Solid Angle for accepting our feedback and implementing features that make this such an incredible joy to use. But um, what is Arnold? Well. I have a tutorial on my site um, that I'm sure a few of you have seen um, about how to render uh, Cinema 4D's hair, take Cinema 4D's hair out of Cinema and render it in Maya using uh, XGen. But um, I cover Arnold a little bit over there and Arnold is a global illumination render um, just like V-Ray or just like Cinema 4D but a little bit different in the sense that Arnold by default, the way it, it is uh, d designed and developed, when you hit render in Arnold, all your ambient occlusion, all your global illumination, caustics, um, everything just works out the box. Um, there is no flickering in your animation like there would be with uh, something like Cinema 4D, and you have to tweak it to figure out you know how you can get rid of that flicker. Um, there's no tweaking with a lot of settings uh, and a bunch of widgets and diodes and things you don't really understand to try to get render times down or you know global illumination takes forever in Cinema 4D well I'm not going to use global illumination at all and I'm just going to try to kind of fake it and try to get my images to look realistic and deal with these crazy light setups and none of that in Arnold um, Arnold is kind of similar to Maxwell in the sense that it's a brute forced, unbiased global illumination renderer and it will render the physical world pretty accurately um, with very little intervention. Uh, the only thing that you tweak in Arnold is really um, just sampling rates to try to bring down the noise in the image. And noise is very acceptable because that's the kind of thing you'll get out of a real camera. Um, if you're in the dark or if the photo is just not developed that well, um, you'll get you'll get noise. And you can work with noise. You can get rid of noise very easily. Um, but unlike Maxwell, which because it tries to achieve extreme amounts of realism, and in doing so, since it 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 truly reflects accurately physically plausibly what what happens in the real world it it's an incredibly slower slow renderer um maxwell has a workflow that kind of sort of alleviates that slowness though but it's uh it's notably slow um when doing certain um effects arnold is incredibly fast for what it does uh for being an unbiased renderer it is superbly fast and Arnold has an incredible interactivity about it that makes it super duper easy for you to very quickly do look dev on things um, in Cinema 4D you're used to you know pressing a button and waiting for the picture to come out oh that doesn't look right let me go back in and fix something else uh, render the picture again oh it doesn't look right or you use a little render region and you try to you wait for that to render and it might go a little fast you can tweak it down so it goes a little bit faster but it's got nothing on the way Arnold's IPR works um, and I'll be covering this all in the uh, the series of course but 
They've um, also brought down the pricing. They uh, Arnold is production proven. It's been used by uh, Digital Domain, by ILM. Uh, it's used by Sony Imageworks for Cloudy with Chance of Meatballs. It's been used on Guardians of the Galaxy, Gravity, uh, Planet of the Apes. Uh, any movie in the last seven years or so, five to seven years or so, has pretty much used Arnold. Um, and Arnold's kind of outplacing even Renderman, even Pixar's Renderman in the uh, in the Hollywood market. Avengers 2, if you saw that, uh, it's been out for a couple of weeks. That also was using Arnold for a lot of uh, its rendering. Um, and, you know, for a while, Arnold you know at the minimum you had to buy at least five licenses to you know even be able to even have Arnold in your shop um, but now they thanks to the way Cinema 4D and the way the freelancers like to work and things they've really embraced us and they've you know made it very easy for us not only to, to install the licenses we don't even have to have like a licensing server um, but they've also you know made it so that you can buy one license um, and, and quickly get to working. Um, there's also a trial, so I, I highly recommend you uh, download it and try it out. Um, I'm not going back, um, and once you try it and once you see how it works and how refreshing it is, you probably won't go back either. Um, as always, once you have a license of Arnold, all the plugins are free. So if you have Maya or Soft Image, Image or Houdini, um, your Arnold license will work with all those as well. So all the plugins are free. You can use Arnold in everything, um, including Cinema 4D. And uh, you can even, thanks to the way Arnold's workflows work, you can even trade assets between them. So you can do hair in Maya using Maya hair um, and bring that back into Cinema 4D and then have the lights in the scene in Cinema 4D, animating in Cinema 4D, but you've got your hair that was done in maybe a program where it's easier to do the dynamics for hair like uh, Maya or you might have something like a fireball or some volumetrics which um, aren't really the domain of Cinema 4D but are very very easy to do in Houdini and uh, there's been quite a few projects I've been working on over the last couple of months where I've been using Houdini to do a lot of pyro effects and a lot of cloud effects for different characters and so I can create a, uh, a fireball or I can create um, a, some clouds and I can clone those in Cinema 4D thanks to Arnold. Um, so it's, it's just an amazing workflow. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but um, I've already uninstalled my release candidate. I was on release candidate 12 which was the last release candidate for uh, the version we are going to be using today, which is a uh, 1.0. Uh, so we can double click on that and hit yes. And we can go ahead and move through all these prompts. And uh, it just quickly installs. It's a deceptively small program for how much power it has. Um, now, before we go into cinema and actually see the layout and see how everything works, um, we're also going to want to go ahead and install some extra shaders. Um, Anders lag lands or Anders sag lands. I, I don't really want to keep butchering his name. Um, but he has produced a beautiful set of uh, shaders for Arnold. And I'm extremely fond of his hair shader actually uh, that comes with this. But um, the AL surface shader is really good. I've used it to do metal on um, a certain character um, in a certain production that I'm doing. And it works really well. It has uh, two layers of uh, uh, specular to it, and it's got some really nice controls. The hair uh, shader has really realistic physical controls for the coloration of the hair and different things like that. Very, very, it's a beautiful joy. It's a joy to work with. Um, and it comes, uh, the shaders come for, for everything. So you can click on this button here to download it, or this button if you're a Mac user. Um, go ahead and download that. I've already got it on my server, so I'm just going to open up the uh, release 
candidate seven here. And I'm going to go ahead and take the C4D to A folder. And there's actually a res file in here. And uh, what I'm going to do is come over here to C4D to A in my uh, Cinema 4D plugins here. I'm going to go ahead and drag that over. And that's just going to go ahead and install in some of the um, dialogues and stuff that you need to be able to see some of the controls in the shader. The shaders themselves are located in the bin folder here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all the shaders. Um, I'm just going to do a control A to go ahead and select all of those. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag those over to the shaders folder. And that's going to pop plop the shaders in there. And uh, that'll take care of that. Now, like I said, um, Arnold does work with, uh, uh, because the plugin is in four different programs, you can pretty much use assets from Softimage, Maya, or Houdini right directly here in Cinema through um, Arnold's procedural uh, system. But in order to actually see those objects um, as they were shaded, in um, their respective programs. You're going to need the shaders for those different programs as well. So I just like to go into the uh, M2A installation myself uh, under solid angle here and under Maya deploy and under 2015. And let's go ahead and I like to grab the, uh, the Maya shaders as well because I've of late been using Maya assets to do different things like hair and um, other such things of that nature. Um, and then we can go back to program files and go back to Maxon, R16, plugins, come into C4D to A. And we can go ahead and just drop the Maya shaders in here. And that way, if we load any sort of Maya asset, um, we'll be able to see it in Cinema 4D through Arnold amazing stuff and then uh, if you happen to have H2A you can go ahead and put the H2A shaders in there as well or if you have a, a soft and mosh to A you can go ahead and do that as well but alright um, let's go ahead and open up Cinema 4D and let that load up and I've already got a licensing server so Arnold's gonna pretty much check out licenses for me automatically from that um, but here we are in my uh, layout that I couldn't really show in my other tutorial because at the time Cinema uh, C4D to A still was kind of sort of under wraps. But uh, here's Arnold and here's all the objects that you can use here plus uh, help guides and different things of that nature. Um, here in your plugins this is where it's going to pop up and you can tear that off and add it to your shelf. Um, I've also got my Arnold IPR window docked into my um, my layout and I use this thing religiously and as you'll see in the next uh, tutorial I'll explain why this is probably one of the most powerful windows in Arnold and frankly now it's like one of the most powerful windows in Cinema 4D honestly um, but okay so we've got it installed um, and uh, we're ready to go. So in the uh, next lesson, I will be covering uh, Testa 2 again. And we'll be going through and shading her for, I guess, the third time now. But uh, this time we'll be doing it with Arnold. All right, so see you guys there.